football to look ahead uh, to the events that will be happening throughout the day. I'm joined by communications advisor Elliot Wilson and New Economics Foundation chief exec Miata Fambula. Good morning to you Good both. Good morning. Uh, the optics were very Boris Johnson, weren't they, Miata? They were what we'd expect. But looking at what followed that in terms of the speech that he gave, didn't really mention unity much, which we thought it might. And also... Uh, that cabinet clear out has been called cabinet carnage. It was brutal yesterday. It was absolutely brutal. I mean, it was a clear out. And you know, the thing that kind of stands out starkly is that we now have a cabinet and indeed a number 10 operation that is packed with ardent Brexiteers, people that believe that we must leave no matter what, no matter the cost of the country, and actually no matter the price and the pain that will be felt by communities up and down the country. So for me, the prospect of a no deal Brexit now looks more likely. A no deal Brexit, by the way, that the government's own watchdog says will tip us into recession, that will cost us 30 billion a year. And I think the thing that I find really terrifying is because Prime Minister Johnson and his top team are so cavalier about a no deal Brexit, and actually they think that with blind faith, with optimism, with bounds of energy, that we'll be okay, they're not going to do the planning, they're not going to devise an effective plan to mop up the mess that will come afterwards. So my view is, look, there is no democratic mandate for a no-deal Brexit. And if they want to do this, they want to do this reckless move, then they've got to take it back to the public before they throw us off a cliff. Um, Mia, to talk to me about... Uh, the front page of one of the papers, actually, is going on the fact that uh, Boris Johnson made his first gaffe, if you want mm. to call it, that breaking protocol and revealing what the Queen said to him. But to be fair, David Cameron did something similar as well. No, D D he did. He did. So saying that, you know, why would you want this job? I mean, it's a fair point. Why would you want this job? As the Queen's probably not the only person <laughs> yeah, exactly thinking, thinking that. I mean, but I think we should just expect more of this. Mm. I don't think uh, Boris, I think it, in the mould of Trump, Boris is not going to follow protocol. He's not going to do what we expect of our politicians. He will be reckless. He will be cavalier. That's sort of how he sort of had his political career. And that's OK. But for the fact that the country is in such a precarious position, embarking on this really difficult thing, when we've come out of, you know, 10 years in which we are still uh, battling the consequences of the financial crisis. So, you know, the, the, the worry, I think, for those of us that are sceptical when we look at Boris Johnson's record is a prime minister that has been free and loose, that has been quite cavalier. Is he the guy for such an important job, such a difficult job, at such an important time for the country? Only time will tell. He's going to be tested by Jeremy Corbyn today, and the two leaders meeting mm. for the first time in the Commons, Miata. It's very interesting because he will be quizzed on the maths behind his promises, yeah. won't he? Completely. And I mean, look, it was good that he talked about the domestic policy agenda. I think we should give him credit for that. Uh, let's hope he does a better job uh, than Theresa May did of trying to actually deliver against that agenda. But I mean, I think the thing that I found quite odd was that in, you know, his very far reaching, wide ranging speech, he didn't mention climate change on one of the hottest days on record. He didn't actually mention housing, one of the biggest crises we face. He didn't mention the fact that actually our economy is not working for the majority of people. And the niggling suspicion I have is that he just doesn't get it. He doesn't get the scale of the economic challenge we face. He doesn't get that growth is not benefiting the majority of people. He doesn't get that actually the country hasn't had a pay rise for a decade or that there are 14 million people living in poverty. And so what they'll do is they'll just peddle out the old prescriptions, turbocharge uh, industry and um, enterprise through tax cut cuts for corporations, okay. and it just won't cut it. Um, Miata, let's have a look at how some of the um, front pages of today's newspapers are, are dealing with that cabinet carnage, as some are calling it, and the road that lies ahead for Boris Johnson. Uh, shall we go to, I think it is, the Guardian first. Uh, they're talking about domestic policy mm. and this cabinet packed with hardline Brexiteers, very right-wing politicians. We'll see uh, not just a, a, an influence on the Brexit outcome, but also domestic policy as well. Yeah, completely. So, I mean, look, it was good that he talked about domestic policy uh, yesterday in his wide-ranging speech. And I think, for me, the interesting thing was, actually, in all of the things he covered, you didn't really get a sense that he understood the scale of the economic challenge we face. So, you know, credit to Theresa May, at least she got the economy wasn't working for everyone. I'm not sure that Boris Johnson does. And with his top team, we have seen a tap to the right. So we've got a Chancellor in Sajid Javid who has a picture of uh, Margaret Thatcher in his office, um, allegedly. And, you know, my worry is that they will try and just peddle the same old medicine for our ailing economy. So, you know, tax cuts for the rich, corporation tax, a bit of money into infrastructure. Hope you get growth and hope it trickles down. But we know from the last 10 years that that prescription doesn't work because we've had growth 
but it hasn't benefited the majority of people. 14 million people living in poverty, flatlining wages for a decade. So we need big reforms. And I'm not sure, with the signal he sent with his right-wing cabinet, that they get it. So we know that um, Boris Johnson is going to go head-to-head -head with Jeremy Corbyn for the very first time in the Commons after that cabinet meeting this morning. And they're not going to table a, a, a vote of confidence. We understand until the very earliest September. Obviously, everybody disappears for holiday later on today. So in that sense, is, is Boris Johnson getting a bit of a head start? Um, he might be getting a head start of about a month, but I mean, I don't think we can underestimate how big a task he set himself. So he's absolutely boxed himself in by saying 31st of uh, October, do or die, and by saying that he will try to renegotiate uh, the withdrawal agreement in basically a month, how he's going to do it only, I don't know. Um, but critically, the, the backstop has to be out. And we, he wants some sort of um, alternative compromise. So it's really hard to see how all of that stacks up, which feels like we're heading towards no deal. It um, feels like we're heading towards no deal. Sajid Javid as Chancellor, what do you make of that, Mia? Uh, so, I mean, he was tipped to be Chancellor. Um, again, I think, let, let's see. Uh, let's see. He's got a big job because he has not just got to deal with the long-term economic agenda, but he's got to set the country up for what we do after uh, we leave and if we leave on no deal. Um, and I, I think the thing that worries me about the kind of economic policy agenda is I haven't heard that much from uh, Johnson or even Javid during the campaign on reforms. I've heard a lot about tax cuts and Wait. tax cuts for the, be uh, the best off. You say Sajid Javid's got a big job as Chancellor. What about Liz Truss replacing Liam Fox as International Trade Secretary? I mean, you know, that's a bit of a poison chalice at the moment, isn't it? As we are so uncertain on Brexit and trade deals with other countries. Well, yeah. I mean, she has to now go and uh, negotiate these trade deals that we were told would be incredibly easy to do. Um, and, I mean, part of it will depend on the terms in which we leave uh, the European Union. Uh, she's got a very difficult job trying to negotiate the trade deal that we want with the US and do it on terms that are right for the UK. Um, so a really, really, really hard job. But the test of everything they've said, you know, they said we would leave. They said it would be easy. They said we could negotiate on easy terms. And they said that we could negotiate trade deals across the world in the easiest possible way. So let's okay. see. Miata Elliott, thank you very much.